Let me welcome you to the smoke box. Windows up, couple in rotation. I boxed out about three or four faces. Welcome back to another edition of the Smoke Box for Be Real TV. I'm Dr. Green Thumb with two legends in the game right here. I mean, some legendary motherfuckers. We got Scott Storch up in here. Scott Storch up in here and Steve LaBelle. My goodness, man, the history that's in this whip right now. We're gonna just blaze on some good old weed. We got some Scott Storch OG, some Storch OG. Right. Um, in Funky Phil Tip 1. In Funky Phil Tip 2, we got some jet fuel, and you know, Steve's gonna be our referee right now. <laughs> Oh, it's a, that's almost like a referee jacket. Yeah, no that's problem, a, I'm a referee. spotter. NBA. <laughs> <laughs> Word up, man. So, um, there, let's just spark right quick, because you know. Why not? You know, start it off right. I mean, you have an endless list of hits <laughs> with several fucking artists. I mean, I mean, you know, it, it's... It would be hard to just sit here and name all the artists that you've produced for and like just, you know, stamped fucking your production and even the artists in the history and time when some of these songs came out, man. I mean, fuck. Man, it's a, it's a blessing to be a part of uh, the movement and, and, um, for as long as I have been and um, touch the culture so strong, man. It's just... It's the love for music, man. Yeah. It just I, keeps you going. I mean, for a time, there was nothing but, like, your beats on the radio, right? With, but with a bunch of different artists, and and you couldn't go to a club without hearing at least, you know, 10 Scott Storch produced songs. <laughs> I mean, how did that it's feel crazy. like when you first, like, when you, when you, when, when the transition happened and you started, the name started, the brand started getting out, and you roll into a club? And now you're hearing like, you know, like your catalog just coming through. You know, it's crazy. It's like, there was a period for my first like 10 years of a 25 year career um, where I never even went out really. Yeah. I was just in the studio. I was almost like a nerd. Like my in homies, the lab. I had every car, I had Ferraris in the parking lot and all that shit in the, of the studio. And that's all the only place they went. I right. had management around me and they were just like, yo, we're gonna make this right now. It was all about work. It was a focused energy. So people would come to like the studio before this club, come smoke my weed. And of course. Leave me there, come back after. And you know, usually uh, you know, have like a little sort of like, you know, post club party at the studio. Right. But then there was a point where you know, I was introduced to some really famous, like, Hollywood, you know, type chicks, and, and then, you know... They started luring yeah, you luring out. out to the club, and then yeah. I, was, I got a taste of that shit, and the, the cameras popping, and the bottles popping, and then just everything, and I went, and I, I went a little too far with it. Just flipped the whole, <laughs> it, it just flipped the whole lifestyle. Yeah, the because whole lifestyle. Do you felt like it was, a, it was a distraction from, like, you know, how you were in the lab all the time and like just kind of focusing on that shit and letting the party come to you. Yeah. Now you're in the fucking Now party. I'm in the party and it was just, I started resting on my laurels and, and just, I had shit in the club jamming, but it was my shit from last year, but I was still, you know. You were still rolling off I was, that. I was stacking, you know what I mean? And, and um, I, lo I stopped working, I started partying, started snorting cocaine and did all kinds of fucked up shit for like eight years. And it came to a point where that shit was just a wrap for me. And I, I knew what I had to do. I had children. I got, uh, you know, I had the ability to just make music again. Nothing stopping me except that yeah. drug. So yeah, I had to, I had to just cut that umbilical cord. Boom, that shit's gone. Yeah, and a lot of the times, you know, when when people have that kind of talent, like the talent you possess and your your work ethic when you're on it. The only thing that could stop us is ourselves and the vices we choose to be that obstacle. You know what I mean? And it's cool that you got through that because that's some shit that a lot of people 
don't really have the the intestinal fortitude to fucking like power through that shit and say you know what i'm cutting it off right here i'm gonna get back to business you know a lot of people that fuck up i feel like they hide and they don't have the courage to come back and say yeah i messed up but here i am again and that's where me and steve labelle you know we we trudging through the, the trenches man and and we knocking on doors again as if like we knew in the game. And and we squeaking our way on to some, some a lot of albums right now. And it shows character that, that that you can do that because you're right. A lot of people don't wanna own up to their shit. No, I embrace it. You too. know what I mean? So it's part of my life. I, you know what? I had a lot of fun. I made a lot of mistakes. And you know, it's like I, I'm not embarrassed of what happened. Anybody that was my age, yeah, that was thrown, you know. Oh, yeah. Fifty million dollars, and you know, it's a story in Miami. <laughs> hey, it's a story that's happened to many of us. But you know, it's all about how you come out of that. Yeah. You know, some people, like I said, don't come out, and the strong ones do. They find a way to, like, you know, find that cutoff point and say, you know what, I got to get back to basics yeah. and shit like that. What, what, what's your inspiration right now? Because at that time, you know, there was different type of. It was a different type of get down with the music. Right now's get down is way different, but I would think that you you would adapt right into what's going on right Fortunately, because you were right like now, one of the guys that like You know show these guys how to do that type yeah, of shit, but you know, it's like different right. waves have different like Different things that you need out of the music and fortunately for me right now Music is back to a place where there's a lot of piano driven stuff right. and it's like it's 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 cool man because I, I just I eat that shit for breakfast and I'm sort of like, I'm working with a lot of young dudes. I got this partner of mine, Diego Ave. I work with a lot. I'm working with Metro Boomin, working with Murder Beat sick, on all the sick. young cats. And yeah. I'm, I'm catching that flavor. And it's like, it's, we just, we just rolling through it, man. Is that your favorite way to create via piano? Yeah. Cause some, some I'm, people yeah, like doing it. the guitar, some, yeah. you know. But I, can, I can emulate like any instrument like through different sounds and effects and running stuff through amps and, right. and making it sound legit like to the point where it's like I got like a case of records in my brain that I'm, there's, I can sample from and, and it sounds like straight up samples and um, I don't have to depend on buying sound packs and stupid stuff that these kids are doing today because I, I know the music part Word up. and I just got to know how to do it to the point where I don't over music it and I just find that one little thing that they can comprehend and boom yeah. Let me ask you this as, as a student of the game Because you As you said You know You've been in this game For 20 years And, and before You know The hits started coming You, you put in work In studios And, and like uh, Played on other You know Other productions And shit like that Yeah When, when did you decide in, in your mind That you could be a producer And not just a player I, I was Originally um, in 1992, I joined a group. <coughs> I was a founding. <coughs> Damn. <laughs> Store Cho G. Baby. Yeah, man. <laughs> I was a founding member of the Roots. I was a keyboard player, and in those days, I didn't really know what the role of who or what I'm supposed to be a producer. This man, I just know I was a keyboard player. Right. I just happened to be writing all the songs in the group. Right. All the tone center and the music and this and that. And um, I kind of felt like I was just labeled as this keyboard player, this white guy who plays keys in the roots. Right. And I, I love the roots, you know, don't get me wrong, but, you know, it's a band. And I wanted to be a creator and I wanted to be in the studio. I watched guys like, you know, the, the Niccolo brothers. Right. I watched guys like, you know, Andy Kravitz and all these people that I've done met in Philly at the time I was doing the Roots stuff and I was like this is what I want to do I want to just be a creator so I remember I had a girlfriend at the time and um, she was like you're going to be the, like the Pete Best of the Roots mm. Pete Best is like the guy that left the Beatles the guy who left the Beatles yeah. yeah. so for a while it was getting <laughs> scary and then I started cooking up some beats and this dude uh, Derek Jackson took me to New York and we did a little tour of everybody and I got a gig, my first producer gig, Busta Rhymes. And the same week, I got yeah. one with Capone and Noriega. <coughs> and, and me and, and Busta made this song, Blot Out. Yeah. It was crazy. And he was the first believer. So and, Salute to Busta. You got to get it. <coughs> yeah, Busta Bust. Busta Bust. And, um, and I knew this. It, it, the big change was really what came into play when 
uh, another person I knew from Philly who was a, a, a female rapper. I put her on her first record with the roots, uh, Eve. Eve, yeah. And Eve had left town. I came to do a jam session at Martini Lands in LA, my first trip ever yeah. to LA. And she's like, yo, I got signed to Dr. Dre to Aftermath Records. <coughs> and you know, you always cool to me, so I'm, I'm gonna put you dude with Dre. Mm. It changed my life overnight. Changed your life. Yeah, coming to LA. For real. So, yeah, the next day I was in with Dre. I, I didn't have any, at that time we had dat tapes. Yeah, I, didn't I have remember any that. Dats with me oh, of yeah. my beats. So I just <laughs> sat down, I played on the piano. And an hour later I had a hotel room key and, a, and I had a, you know, a big stack of money and I was ready to work on this new album, you know, the Chronic that's, 2000. That's the thing about the doc, man. He got, you know, he knows <coughs> talent when he sees it. That's, I mean, that's real shit. Like, he'll put it on. You know, it's it's a known history. <coughs> How you doing back there, Mr. LaBelle? Man, right. I don't smoke and I'm like, uh, what do you, you call it, clamming or something? Clam I think I call it. Wow, I'm fucking high as kite. Scott, you should tell Be Real also when you uh, interned. Oh, yeah, I was telling him earlier a little bit of something about that. But, yeah, when I was interning at at, um, at Rough House. Oh, yeah. And, um, you know, it was y'all, Criss Cross, and um, the Fugees. Yeah. All on the label. All on the and label. I was and like, the goats. And the goats, yeah. 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 <laughs> but Cypress Hill was like, you know, the greatest thing, man. You know, me and the homies, we just fucking blaze out do this right here what we doing this man it's like it's hell crazy. you didn't turn in the studio from the bomb when you were in the studio recording cypress hill he's in there yeah that's crazy he's in there interning yeah this guy was telling me that story i was trying while. to squeak my way onto records man i played piano and it worked man I, you know i was i quit school in ninth grade and i started going taking the train from this little area in pennsylvania over the bridge to philly and I walked into, wandered into 4th Street over there. Yeah. So fucking 444. Studio, Studio 4. 4. We need a Scott Storch Cypress Hill collab. Oh, man, we oh, need hell. that. That's he crazy. He just, he just, call, you just called it. <coughs> you put that in the air like a fucking joint, man. Man. <laughs> now, now, Steve, you know, when, when did you see the flip? Like when, you know, like, uh, you know, coming from your point of view, because you've been in the game longer than both of us, you know, um, you know, when did you see the transition, like, that he was, like, you know, back to back to base, getting back to base? Well, you know, look, I've been in the music industry because of Jam Master J 30 years, and um, I know Scott at least 15 years, you know, running cross paths and so on and so forth. But I went to an interview, uh, Scott, for my talk show, which I interviewed <coughs> you, That's right. live with Steve Lobel. And, you know, Scott and me have so many mutual friends, but we have the most <coughs> respect for one another. And... Um, he was like, hey, you want to manage me? And I was like, you know, me think about it. And I, it wasn't much to think about. And I said, you know what? Yeah. I don't even care. And I just, I said, I was humbled and honored and blessed. And I was like, you know what? Let's go. And we both have so much in common. And we laugh every day. And I don't really laugh a lot. And from there, you know, the rest was history. We just started making moves. We got the new game record out with Jeremiah. Nice. We got the new Shaggy record. We got a Chris Brown record coming. We work with French. We work with Bone Thugs. So on and so forth. So, you know, look, everybody goes through trials and tribulations. That's right. And you don't judge somebody like that. Only God could judge. But Scott's talent never left. So I was like, I wasn't just going to say I'm a believer in the beginning, but I was a believer. And then uh, <coughs> we just started going. And we got so much going on. <coughs> and um, it's like hip hop. You know, we call ourselves the Jew crew. Like three, <laughs> six, what do you call us? Uh, two Love Jew. Two Love Jew crew. <laughs> So, you know, just two white guys who are Jewish from the East Coast in the hip-hop business. So, you know, yep. we're just working, man. But it, it's good to see that, though, man. And it's good to see, like, you, you, you know, you active again like that. And hear Hungry. it more than anything. Because, uh, I mean, shit, man. It's like a, the history of shit that you've laid down in your career, you know. Coming from all the way back in those intern days to what you, you were able to accomplish, that shit is Come on, Fat Jolene blessing. back, still Dre, <laughs> Dude. Candy Shop, 50 Cent. Like, we can go on and on we and on. This guy's, on just, come on. <laughs> yeah, as a matter of fact, go on and on. I want people to know go the on, songs Scott, you Give a little resume. Smash on them because people need to hear this shit. Stick your chest out, you deserve Stick it. Stick your chest out, for real. Still Dre, Explosive, Just a Little Bit, Candy Shop. Popping them things, lean back, make it rain. Um, run it, Chris Brown. Run it. Give me that naughty girl, baby boy. You should let me love you. Uh, let me blow your mind, even Gwen Stefani. Damn. Um, I mean, 
We went over it. It was like 860 some You ain't no Birdman and Wayne. Damn. G Unit. See, G-Unit. you ain't know. Now, if you didn't know, now you do. But know. I could go back further. I mean, you know, another sign, Schooly D. <laughs> You know, people Whoa. don't know about Schooly yeah, D. Yeah, Schooly D. They, Shout out to Schooly D. Hip hop don't know you. Wow. You know, if you don't know what we're talking about. Exact word up, man. And he's still doing stuff with new artists like PB Rocks. Yeah, man. Um, you know, Schooly's yeah. doing art now. Yeah, I know. Like he's painting and shit like yeah. that. And I see his name on them, like, um, them cartoons. <coughs> yeah. Like, kid Robot. Yeah, the robot, robot chicken. chicken and shit like yeah. that. He's doing his thing, man. Shout out to Schooly. Yeah, <coughs> word up, man. Now, being that we're in a smoke box and, and you are smoking the Storch OG, you know, what got you into the, the, the cannabis culture? Man, I've always been in it and it's always worked for me. When I switched over to the other shit, that's when shit went wrong for me. So as a blessing, um, the weed was there for me when I left that, that other shit alone. Right. And really helped keep me off of it, which yeah. is a great thing. It keeps me calm, I sleep really well. Very productive. Back to focus. Yeah, focus. And, and weed does that. It's just a peaceful, like, you know, amazing vibe. It creates a good vibe. <coughs> and I think it enables you to listen to music for a longer time before I, your ears give out. I believe so, too. Definitely. Really? And it allows you to listen to it in a different perspective. Because when you listen to a song when you're straight, completely sober, or an album, you take it one way. And if it's dope, it's dope, mm-hmm. no doubt. But like when you fucking, if you if you get stoned and you listen to it when you're baked, yeah, it can, takes on different colors, different layers, yeah. different <laughs> different dynamics. You hear it differently. Oh yeah. Well, we smoked out the Storch OG right now. Some high as a kite. Yeah. Oh yeah. Where, where could where could they find the, the Storch OG? The Storch OG <laughs> is actually my girl um, is the girl that got me sober. Right. And her whole family is a you know. In the you know the weed world, they got WHTC. Nice. It's a dispensary in Lancashire, and, uh, <laughs> real impressive facility. And they were like, "Yo, let's make a Scott Storch OG for you." And um, man, it, it's a blessing. So I always have a nice, nice uh, stash of weed around the house. Right <laughs> on. Got the Storch OG. And that's your favorite uh, strain of OG. Yeah. OG Kush. Yeah. It's a it's a hybrid OG, but it's like. It's <laughs> Clean. All right, back there. Right. Yeah, you know what Scott was saying on the way here. Be real. Gets you, gets you stoned. I, I like saying that. Stuff. I like the Gorilla Glue, and there's a new strain I just tried called Dosey Dose. Yeah, that's really good. Dosey Dose. Yeah, it's, I just had some of that. Uh, Burner put me onto that. Yeah, yeah, that shit is. That shit they is have fun. it there also. So no blunts, right? Uh, no, I'm papers. Straight and white girls. I like the dabs. Yeah. Nug run dabs. Nug run dabs. <clears throat> no trim. You know how long I've been in this music industry and around marijuana, and I never smoked and. <laughs> maybe once in Amsterdam with Jam Master Jay Sun and maybe once with Scott on 420, but this is like amazing feeling. We just need some snacks. But we on the way here, Scott snack. was talking some stuff like, I smoke more than Be Real and Snoop Dogg. I'm like, nah, <laughs> you can't you can't fuck with that, Scott. I think we probably smoke the same. <laughs> yeah. you know, oh shit, I'm about to join the crew, man, because... There you go. I'm laugh. I don't know. I mean, you feel pretty good though, right? I'm high as a kite. Yeah. Need some sweets, maybe. You know, I'm choked out. But give me two years. Good. He's gonna be the biggest pothead in the world. You like, oh, I, got, I got some. some he good. gave me some uh, weed uh, juice, <laughs> juice, and I was up for two days, <laughs> and I was laughing. It was some cannabis juice, and it tasted like cranberry juice. So I got high as hell off that. That's the whole house was spinning. And um, I just wouldn't stop laughing, and I, I was stalling. Him a shot. That's great. I poured him a little shot. <clears throat> I said, "Drink this. Don't drink any more than this." That helps. And I went upstairs to get a tattoo of my dog on my chest. <sighs> and I was upstairs. He was downstairs, and he continued to drink the entire bottle. Oh, 240 shit. milligrams of Zass. Oh, oh boy! Yeah. Destroyed. That, yeah, destroyed. He came upstairs, and he was all laughing. I was like, "Something's wrong here." He told me he drank the bottle. I said, this is going to be bad in like 30 minutes. Got to ride it out, too. And it was bad. He's a soldier. That's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah, that's a, that's a long ride, too. That's a long ride back. Who, okay, last question. I should have asked this before because the weed questions are always last, but I wanted to know. You know, what What was your favorite collab? The one, the one, because you did a lot, like you produced for a lot of people, but what was your favorite shit that was like your, like your most... You know that session where like, damn, you know, what was your damn factor? I had a few dams, but the one dam that's, for me, is incredible is the Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre record. 
just being a kid and being able to be part of that and yeah. like to have composed uh, Still Dre. Yeah, that, I mean, that shit. Classic. I have a story about that record because I went back to the East Coast for a little bit and um, I was um, just doing some work out there and I hadn't quite popped off yet, but I had been working with Dr. Dre. Right. And everybody knew, oh shit, Scott's been working with Dre, but oh, he's back here. I actually was cleaning my apartment out because I was moving back to actually <coughs> permanently live in LA. And I remember, I didn't realize how the time was blown. And I was going to do a jam session, and I was going from driving from Philly to New York. I was going over the Holland Tunnel, and it was frozen. And we got to just sit there and, and wait, and all of a sudden, Funkmaster Flex dropped. <laughs> Bombs. Bling, 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 bling. I was like, what? Oh, this shit's out? And it was out. And he dropped bombs on that shit for 45 minutes. And for 45 minutes, we sat on that frozen over uh, bridge that leads to the Holland Tunnel. We were going to play at the Wetlands. Wow. That must have felt crazy that, you know, you're hearing Funk Master <clears throat> Flex, who pretty much, you know, at that time was just stamping all the hot shit. Yes. It was the craziest feeling. That was my first really fucking massive record, man. Word up. I wish you know. I'm gonna try to get Dre in the box. One of these things. I got come on, Dre, get in the box with the other doctor. Scott's been in with Dre too, cooking. Yeah, yeah Dre, up. Dre, Dre. Uh, I'm back in his good graces. I lost him for a little bit, man, when I went crazy. But he heard the news. He knew I was fucking with this guy. <clears throat> man, it's a blessing to be back in, in in that camp. Well, I'm glad you're back, brother. Thank Fuck. You. <clears throat> they need your music right now. And we got to get something going Lord on, for real. We got to get something going on, Cypress. Hell yeah, Cypress. anytime, man, come to the lab and let's do it. Word up. Where can they Where can they find you if they want to, you know, get at you and follow the movement? Yo, um, scottstorch.com, um, scottstorch, uh, if everyone want to, like, you know, reach out, send stuff, scottstorch2016 at Gmail. Word. Scott Storch official Scott on Storch Instagram. Scott Storch official on Instagram. I'm not really into that stuff, man. I just make the music. Word up. <laughs> what about uh, the shows, Steve? Um, you know, Steve live with Steve Lobel, and you can find me at We Working on Instagram, which is Steve Lobel. You know, we're just Steve sitting Lobel, in the studio. Steve Lobel, Insta Work. Man is active right here. You got to follow my man, watch the show. It is a dope show. I've been on it. It's dope. Scott, too? Yep. Yeah, Scott, I appreciate that. You I know, can't front. <clears throat> you got me baked, dog. <laughs> I know, I was going to say, yo, why is Scott stop smoking? Right now. He got him baked. And, <laughs> yeah, and, man, I'm you trying know? to remember social medias and shit. <laughs> to everybody out there, you're looking at 30, 40, 50, about 60, 70 years of, of music culture. Yeah. Word up, man. We thank you for watching. Leave your comments. Subscribe <clears> to the <throat> channel. Fuck with Scott Storch, Steve LaBelle. It'll do you right. This has been another smoke box. Thank you very much. Let me welcome you to the smoke box. Windows up, couple in rotation. Hot box out about three or four faces.